So the work I'm going to present is about using non-negative matrix factorization to learn simultaneous part of human motions. So we are interested in complex human activities. And by complex, we mean activities and motions that are the combination of several simpler building blocks. In this illustration, you can identify a sequence of short-term motions that can be combined together to form the complex activity. Learning a repertoire of such short-term motions have been shown by previous studies to, for example, help systems achieve better performance on compression or classification tasks. However, in this work, we'll be another, uh, interested in another way of decomposing the same, the same gestures. If you look again at the same picture, you can recognize a set of gestures that you already know, for example, running and jumping, hitting the ball, following the ball with the eyes. And actually, these gestures are not composed in sequence, they are active at the same time and combined simultaneously to form the complex activity. So we'll be interested in methods that can enable systems to learn the part of parts of motion that are active at the same time. So I don't know if you ever seen something like that. Actually, this is an instance of a very interesting thing for our problem. This uh, graphic represent is, a, is a, no, a notation system that has been developed by Rudolf Laban to represent choreographies. Actually, there is a very interesting uh, structure in choreography because each of these symbols represents a simple gesture and this notation emphasizes the fact that choreographies are made by composing simple gestures both at the same time and in sequence. So in this work, we will focus on the simultaneous com uh, com combination of simpler gestures. More concretely, here are examples of the kind of gesture we'll be interested in. So each of these short choreographies is actually composed of two or three simple gestures that are taken from a fixed repertoire of, of gestures. So the problem that will interest us in this work will be from observation of such demonstrations of complex gestures to learn the repertoire of simple gestures that compose these complex choreographies. So here is another, example, another illustration of this problem. So we have a set of gestures com combined together to form complex choreographies and we want to learn this set of gestures. This problem is actually a, an instance of a more general problem, which is a general class of problems, which, which are called dictionary learning problems, and which have been studied in other fields. For example, to be able to learn to separate different instruments in a piece of music, or to be able to learn from face, uh, images of faces, to learn some relevant parts to, to decompose these faces, for example, on nose, eyebrows, mouth, and, th and parts like that. Unfortunately, this problem is ambiguous. For example, the same gesture can be decomposed at different levels of details, or sometimes the gesture itself is ambiguous. For example, this is simi uh, a similar problem than the one that occurs when you want to decompose a sound in relevant words of, or language elements, and two people from different mother songs can interpret the sound in a different way. We are going to, thus we are going to use heuristic to guide the dictionary learning and to, uh, try to overcome this ambiguity problem. The first heuristic we are going to use is non-negativity. Basically, this can be interpreted as the fact that we want simple gestures to be present or not, not present or more or less present in each choreography, but we don't want such thing as simple gesture to be negatively present in a choreography. We are also going to use another kind of heuristic, which is guiding the learning of the dictionary of gestures with a linguistic modality. Actually, we will learn on top of both a demonstration of a motion and a linguistic description of this motion. Making learning happen on such a multimodal space can also be seen as modeling the language grounding problem. So, we want to, learn to build a system that can, from observations of both 
a human demonstrated choreography and a linguistic description of this choreography, a system that is able to learn a dictionary of primitive elements, such as in a second step, the system can be evaluated on reconstructing the linguistic description associated to a new demonstration of the choreography only. In this work, we are going to focus on the, the case where the linguistic description is composed of symbolic, of, uh, is actually symbolic, and this can be seen as associating to a demonstration of a choreography, the kind of annot annotation I've introdu introduced before that are composed of uh, unknown symbols. A similar work has been uh, done in previous work by Drizon and colleagues, where they consider spoken, real spoken utterances associated to symbolic description of a scene, and actually they build, a, they use the, an algor the same algorithm that we are going to use here for motion to be able to learn words from the real spoken utterances in a similar framework. So the algorithm we are going to use in this non-negative matrix factorization, in a nutshell it can be seen as taken a data matrix which columns are samples, and learning a decomposition of this data matrix into both a dictionary and a coefficient matrix. The columns of the dictionary are going to be interpreted as our primitive elements, and we can see that this algorithm uh, makes an approximation of each example from the data as a linear combination of the, elem the elements of the dictionary. So, in our case, the data is actually composed of a motion and a linguistic part. Thus, the dictionary is also going to be composed of this motion part and this linguistic part, and each primitive element that we are going to learn will actually encode some patterns of correlation between the motion and the linguistic modality. On the other hand, the coefficients that we are going to learn are an internal representation of the data for the system. And actually what's interesting is that this internal representation is not binded to any, uh, to neither the, the motion or, nor the linguistic modality. And we are going to use this property. So in our task we want to reconstruct a linguistic description associated to a motion demonstration. <coughs> for that we are going to proceed in two steps. First, the motion will be transformed into a, an internal representation using only the motion part of the dictionary. And then from this internal representation, the system is going to reconstruct a linguistic description uh, uh, using the linguistic part of the dictionary. So actually, the first step transforms motion to int an internal representation and then the internal representation to a linguistic reconstruction. To use this algorithm, we will need to represent the data in a way that is compatible with uh, the, <coughs> the algorithm, especially to, we will need non-negative data. So the human demonstration of choreographies are actually recorded through a Kinect device, <coughs> and so the system will observe a moving skeleton, and from this moving skeleton is going to extract angles and angle velocities for each degree of freedom of the body. So from the, the demonstration, we get a trajectory for each degree of freedom over time of the angle position. This trajectory will be transformed into an histogram of the positions of each uh, degree of freedom. So actually, we are going to encode for each degree of freedom the frequency of each angle, angular position. And this will give us a set of simple histograms, and we are going to concatenate, concatenate all these histograms to form a non-negative representation of the data. Actually, using this process is a little bit too destructive because we lose all the dynamics information, the, all, uh, the, all information about the dynamics of the motion. So we are going to use a slightly different process but very, very similar, which is to represent the data by histograms on both uh, on the joint angle velocity space. Actually, it is a little bit smarter, and we will see that. Using this representation will enable a good performance for our learning system. So once we've got these histograms, we in the same way flatten them and uh, obtain a non-negative vector representing the data. 
So the linguistic representation will be very simple since, uh, since symbolic symbols are, re are represented to describe the choreography. So we will have a fixed length vector of binary values just telling if the, the symbol is present or not in the description. So we will evaluate this setting on a, co on a data set that we have recorded. So the first part is uh, only contains simple gesture demonstrated alone. This is used to evaluate the quality of the data representation. And the other, the other sets are actually the, the complex choreography in which we are interested. <coughs> So this, um, this results uh, compare the different representation of the data. So basically that confirms our intuition that it's better to represent data on the joint angle velocity space. The result for the data set with the complex choreographies. Actually, the system we described reconstruct a linguistic description that is a vector made of continuous value. In order to evaluate the system by comparing this reconstruction to the human made description, we have to threshold this vector to obtain a vector of binary values that can be com compared. We also performed another experiment to get further evaluation of the ability of the system to cope with the combinatorial structure of the motions. Actually, uh, in this dataset, uh, some choreographies happen to, to, to be encountered by the system many times, several times, and we want to, to know if the system is able to, recon re uh, to recognize uh, gestures in a complex choreography when they are composed with gestures that they have never, never been composed uh, to, uh, with in the training. So actually, uh, we performed another experiment where only uh, new choreographies, that, that is to say gestures that have been never observed combined together, are present in the test set. And we see that this leads to a small drop in performance, but we still perform way above uh, random. So actually, this proves that the system is not learning by heart all the possible choreographies, but is uh, and the, the associated linguistic reconstruction, but is actually recognizing the parts of these choreographies. So to conclude, uh, many extensions are possible for, for this work. First, we can think about using other structural constraints, such as, for example, sparsity, to try to take into account other uh, aspects of the, of the data we, we, we encounter. Another very interesting direction is to mix this experiment with the one from this reason and colleague, which means present a, co a demonstration of a choreography together with a real sound de uh, linguistic description and uh, try to see if the system is able to um, to learn from the, the structure of this completely, completely continuous multimodal space. Then uh, we can also imagine uh, trying to go to mixing the sequence composition and the uh, simultaneous composition by learning position in time of the gesture we organize. And finally, uh, since the, the representation we've used in this experiment is very destructive, we can't uh, reconstruct, reproduce a motion from this representation. And thus, we would like also to see if similar ideas can be implemented with representations that enable the reproduction of the demonstration. And so we've done some, some preliminary work in this direction also that was published in the IROS uh, Human Behavior Understanding Behavior, uh, Workshop.